Hello everyone, welcome to God Talk with Gary. We've been discussing the problem of evil and the challenge it uh, poses to Christian faith, uh, especially when we hold uh, to uh, a strong beliefs that seem to be in conflict with the reality of evil. We say that God is all good, we say that God is all powerful, uh, we believe that evil is real, not an illusion, then if God is so powerful, he certainly should be able to stop it. And if God is good, he should want to stop it. But we all experience evil and bad things happen to everyone. There are different ways uh, to talk about it. And in these uh, series of talks, which we are approaching the end uh, in the next uh, two sessions, uh, we've been talking about sections of offense that sort of create an enclosure in which we can safely bring our questions, our doubts, uh, our concerns uh, in relation to this question. And uh, the fence is created because this, you know, if you go beyond certain, uh, certain areas, you're no longer discussing it as a, as a, as a Christian disciple. Uh, for example, if we say God isn't good, well, that's beyond uh, uh, the boundary, I think. If we say that God isn't powerful, then that, that, that too. So I'm, I'm trying to create this safe space uh, and to reflect how Christians have handled this. We have said several things. I won't preview them. You can see the other short videos. But uh, let me add this today, that uh, uh, God certainly uh, causes uh, or uh, allows us to see disaster as uh, a way we can come to him, through which we can come to him. And in times of distress, we certainly turn to God in prayer. And we are aware that we're probably not going to know everything uh, uh, in this life. All of our answers are not going to come in this life. So because Christians believe in a life after life, life after death, uh, that it's possible that we'll learn some things later on that we don't know today. So we can still maintain faith. But also, when distress comes, the Bible gives us some indication that sometimes it can be for our discipline or for our education. Now, it's difficult to think of, uh, you know, uh, unexplainable uh, uh, a so a sorrow or disaster. Uh, God, is, God is trying to spank us or something like that. But uh, there is this uh, section in the book of Hebrews, chapter 12, that says to endure hardship as discipline because God is treating us as sons and then this rhetorical question, I mean, what son is there that hasn't been disciplined by his father? Now, we're talking about discipline, not ta talking about child abuse here, for sure. But if you're not disciplined, and everyone undergoes discipline, uh, then you are illegitimate children and not true sons. Moreover, we have all had human fathers who disciplined us and we respected them for it. We're talking about discipline. We're not talking about abuse. How much more should we submit to the Father of our spirits and live? Our fathers disciplined us for a little while as they thought best, but God disciplines us for our good that we may share in his holiness. And no discipline uh, is pleasant at the time, but painful. Later on, however, it produces a harvest of righteousness and peace for those who are trained by it. Hmm. So is there some way that we are learning certain kinds of discipline uh, in uh, the experience of, uh, uh, of dis distress or evil or calamity or disaster or the uh, tough circumstances we are uh, uh, called upon to go through in, the, in these times? So suffering may teach us, uh, but what does it teach us? Uh, uh, well, it may teach us faith, it may teach us humility, and it may teach us patience. The psalmist, David, in the Hebrew Scriptures, Psalm 119, Before I was afflicted, I went astray, he says, but now I obey your words. It was good for me to be afflicted so that I might learn your the de, uh, de, uh, decrees. And I know, O oh Lord, that your laws are righteous. And in faithfulness, you know, you have afflicted me. Hmm, it's very interesting. 
So, uh, one of my one of my uh, old professors, uh, uh, Jim Packer, J. I. Packer, uh, in in a book uh, or in an article called Hot Tub Religion, he said God uses chronic pain and weakness, along with other afflictions, as his chisel for sculpting our lives. Felt weaknesses uh, deepens dependence upon God for strength each day. The weaker we feel, the harder we lean, and the harder we lean, the stronger we grow spiritually, even while our bodies waste away. To live with your thorn, uh, uh, reference to this, this, this part of scripture says your thorn in the flesh, uh, uh, to live with your thorn uncomplainingly, that is sweet, patient, and free in heart to love and help others, even though every day you feel weak. That's true sanctification. It is true healing for the spirit. It is supreme victory of grace. The healing of your sinful person goes forward even though the healing of your mortal body does not. And the healing of persons is the name of the game so far as God is concerned. So it's quite possible that in midst of unexplainable troubles, we can grow in faith and humility and in patience. And our kindness and the virtues that we show become the proof of God's presence in the lives of other people. Romans, St. Paul in Romans chapter 5 said, not only so we can rejoice in sufferings because we know that suffering produces perseverance, perseverance produces character, character produces hope, and hope does not disappoint us because God has poured out his love into our hearts by the Holy Spirit whom he has given us. Now sometimes also we can say distress comes upon God's people uh, to, to not just teach teach us something, but to teach others something that, that, that others can learn from the way that we behave in the circumstances we're going through. So distress can come to us uh, to teach other people uh, uh, humility and love and patience and compassion and usefulness. And as we interact with others who suffer, we may learn uh, from them, and of course they may learn from us how to handle the realities of life. And, and God will never, ever uh, uh, use you, uh, you as sort of a discarded uh, you know, piece of chalk and he's trying to get uh, some, some marks out of to teach people. No, it, it is not you know, put in that way. Now, nobody wants to sign up and say, hey, hey, God, could you use me? Uh, uh, that, that, that would probably be, you, you know, the, the Bible is not going in that direction here. It's just the reality that sometimes when you don't have patience, you can learn patience from other people. And sometimes when others don't have joy, you can share your joy with them. The Bible talks about the fruit of the Spirit, you know, there's love and joy and peace. But the fruit of the Spirit, and Christians want to have the fruit of the Spirit in their lives, but it's not for self-consumption. The fruit of the Spirit in our lives is so that others may feast when they are hungry, that others may feast from your joy when their joy is depleted, from your patience when their patience is depleted, from your faithfulness when their faithfulness is at a low ebb. So I pray today that as you're looking uh, at this horrible situation which we are all experiencing, that you may very well be able to say, well, maybe I can help someone today, and maybe I can encourage someone today. Why don't you set yourself a goal? Uh, you have social media, you have email, Skype, FaceTime, texting. Why not... Choose five people today and say, may God bless you. May God encourage you. I'm praying for you. Let's covenant together to pray for each other so that we may see a good resolution to this challenge. In the name of Jesus, I offer you these ideas. Amen.